Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about orange items, the two legendaries that come in Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, we got Valinir and we got Shadowmourne. We're going to be talking about what's the priority of how these items come out and what's the priority of uh, exactly how you're going to give them to your raid. That is what we're talking about. Now, first up, Valinir, the healer legendary item. Big, big ticket item love this item what's fun about valinir is it's a lot similar to like a thunder fury this is something that comes out in the second phase of wrath of the lich king and this is going to be something that you want to prioritize who you give it to because this is going to be impactful for your progression for the next two phases afterwards it's different than most legendaries because uh this actually matters like every time that you invest into giving someone a valinir you know that it's going to be worth it for many more months to come. It's not just a shiny um, item to have just to like top off a notch at the end of an expansion. And it's definitely not worthless or like a dumb meme legendary. This is like a very legitimate leg legendary that matters. Um, Valinir has this effect. It says your healing spells have a chance to cause blessing of ancient kings for 15 seconds, allowing your heals to shield the target absorbing damage equal to 15% of the amount healed. So basically what happens is there's this proc, and every time that it procs, you have 15 seconds for all of your overheals to then shield uh, people uh, based on the amount of that heal. Due to this, Valinir Pryo is always going to be number one to your Holy Paladin has to be your holy paladin the reason we do this is for a couple of reasons one holy paladin does a an enormous amount of overhealing and on top of that all of the overhealing is done because of this big 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 holy light that's hitting the target that's being casted on which means the absorb that is being hit thanks to this proc is going to be the biggest value of absorb possible that's what we're basing a lot of this off of. So your Holy Paladin has to be your number one prio. On top of the fact that your Holy Paladin is probably your biggest carry healer anyway. Uh, they're one of the best healers, if not the best healer in the game. Uh, you really just want to invest this into your best Holy Paladin. You, you know the one that is, is going to be around for the next two phases. And is going to be there for when y'all kill Heroic Lich King. This is like the most important investment you can make in your healing core. Now, who comes second in the Valinir Pryo? In my opinion, it has to be, trick question, it's another Holy Paladin. It, it, to me, it's got to be another Holy Paladin. You go back to back Holy Paladin because in any normal, um, any respectable healing comp in Wrath, you're going to take two Holy Paladins anyway. You're going to be taking two Holy Paladins, a Disc Priest, a Resto Druid, and either a Resto Shaman or a Holy Priest. That's kind of how the healing core goes. And for all the same reasons that you go Holy Paladin for number one, you go Holy Paladin for number two. The only downside with Holy Paladins and the way that the proc works is that they don't get the absorb that that bubble out to many people very very well because they're not really good at raid healing. They do have splash healing with uh, you know their Glyph of Holy Light. And depending on how it's scripted, it may even proc off of Judgment of uh, Light uh, heals. So it's possible that all your melee are just going to get splashed with like small absorbs here and there. But for all the same reasons that we put Holy Paladin on number one, we put them on number two. It just makes the most sense. They're going to get the most amount of value. This helps the survivability of all your tanks enormously and anyone who gets targeted by Holy Lights in your raid. Now, number three. Oof. Number three. To me, I got to give it to the rest of Druid. I know people are going to have some opinions about all these coming from here on out, but hear, hear me out. The rest of Druid goes number three because the rest of Druid is going to going to cover the gap, exactly the gap that Holy Paladins have. The rest of Druid is literally meant for blanket healing. They're amazing at it. They're going to spam rejuvenation on all the raid, and they're going to hit wild growth on all the raid as well. They are going to be getting out these big, overhealed, uh, heal over time effects onto your raid, which is going to add basically just free HP to everyone in the raid. It's just like having another 
disc priest, an effective disc priest for a lack of better words. And it's not quite the same, of course, but that's what you're getting out of this. The Druid is going to provide the most amount of effective blanket healing, the quickest uh, with that uptime as well to everyone. So if you get three Valineers, which I think a lot of guilds should be able to get three Valineers without doing too many split runs, maybe just like have your Resto Druid do a few runs on the side, depending on how long Phase 2 lasts. You may just get three if you just run your main raid over and over and over until Tier 9 comes out. Or you just go you just go back to tier uh to old war during tier nine just a little bit to finish off that third one. And we'll finish off the last three, even though they might be a little too unrealistic for some people. I would say number four has got to be your resto shaman. The reason for resto shaman is it's kind of a, a hybrid of your holy paladin and your resto druid. They're getting a big, big uh, effectiveness out of getting this buff out to everyone in the raid while also having a large value of the Absorb based in, uh, caked into their Chain Heal and Riptide effects. So their big Chain Heal spamming is basically getting big Absorbs out to a lot of people really quickly. So a lot of people for that reason will even put Resto Shaman over Resto Druid in this case. Uh, I wouldn't, but I can see why you would, and I wouldn't have an issue with it if I saw a guild doing it, if their Resto Shaman was number three on the priority that's fine. I just wouldn't put your Resto Shaman as number one in the priority. Uh, but I totally see the value in having a Resto Shaman do it. And then fifth is going to be your Holy Priest. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the Resto Shaman. I mean, really, you're not going to have a, a Resto Shaman if you have a Holy Priest. You're not going to have a Holy Priest if you have a Resto Shaman. So these two kind of go four and five, can kind of switch anyway. But in general, your Holy Priest is kind of like a similar cross between a Resto Druid and a Resto Shaman. Uh, they're a blanket healer, but they also have burst healing with their big 3-3 three three serendipity uh, prayer of healing hits. So they're just going to get good effectiveness of getting it out to the raid, but they're ultimately one of the worst uh, with the value of having Valinir in their hands. Uh, they're going to do just fine if they get a trauma and ICC, uh, and they'll be just fine if they get uh, a staff or a main hand with an offhand with a lot of haste on it. They'll be totally fine. But if they get their hands on a Valinir, they're going to be really, really happy. They're going to be very, very happy if they get one, but they probably won't get one. And that's fine. It is what it is. And then lastly, it has to be your Disc Priest. Um, now, it, barring any weird uh, interactions that we don't know of yet, or any bugs that might come up with Wrath Classic, assuming we get the kind of scripting that we're thinking we're going to get, this Valinir is going to have next to zero usefulness on a Disc Priest. And the reason is Disc Priest is spamming Powered Shield. The times that they're going to get this proc off and actually get an Absorb out on someone is only from when they Penance or a Prayer of Mending. And God forbid if they're like Flash Healing, or really if they're, they never should be unless they're in like a 10-man or something weird if they hit Renew. But ultimately they're really never Healing Healing they're mostly power word shield spamming. It's of course like keeping palm out onto the raid and then penancing when necessary, but you're mostly just power word shielding. The effectiveness of when this proc happens, you might literally have 15 seconds where you aren't healing and you're just hitting power word shield every single global. So you might just have like zero effectiveness from the proc of Valineer. So for that reason, Disc Priest is never on the priority list for this. Never. We don't give it to them. Period. Okay, great. That's Valinir. I feel good about it. You should too. This is how you should priori prioritize your Valinir going into Classic Wrath. Next up is Shadowmourne. Okay, Shadowmourne. Now, different to Valinir, um, how Valinir comes out in Phase 2, Shadowmourne isn't actually accessible until Phase 4, until the very last phase of Classic Wrath. It's kind of similar more to like an Atiesh. Like in Classic Rat or in Classic WoW, when you would get to Nax Ramus, uh, you would have cleared the content before you even had an Atiesh. And it's kind of similar with the Shadow Morn, although a little slightly different. The only caveat is I would say most good guilds will clear Heroic Lich King without getting their first Shadow Morn fully built. But that's not the case for everyone. Some guilds out there are going to be farming ICC for a long while until they get their first Light of Dawn. And because of that, 
your first, your very first shadow more priority actually does matter for at least that one last like little tiny stretch of progression. It does genuinely matter for that. Maybe your guild is hard stuck on heroic professor putricide or you're hard stuck on heroic lich king. And it's those two are can be guild killers for some guilds. And so because of that, I will say that this legendary matters. It's not quite an ATS. It's not quite just a status symbol or just something that you just give to an officer because the game is over and you've already beaten the game. Would kind of take some a little bit of consideration into your progression with this. Because of that, two hand axe. Uh, we only have three DPS that are going to be using two hand axe. We don't consider anyone else really for this. We don't consider DK tanks or a blood DK DPS. Just these three right here, Fury, Unholy, Ret. And um, the first one we got to go for is your Fury. The uh, reason we give it to Fury is, and we're not including arms in this discussion, arms and Fury, wh whatever. We're, we're just talking about Fury. Um, Fury gets the first Shadowmorn, in my opinion, because Fury is your premier DPS at this point in the game. They're going to be one of your best, if not the single best DPS in your entire raid. When they get their hands on Shadowmorn, everything about Shadowmorn works super, super well with Fury. And you want to invest every big ticket item you can into your Fury because they scale infinitely better than anyone else in the game. Plus, your Fury Warrior is one of the single best DPSs just for the fight Lich King. They are really, really, really good at Lich King. That is just a really effective fight for Warriors in general. And so because of that, you got to go with your Fury Warrior. That's just my honest opinion. You're not going to be in too much trouble if you give it to someone else, but you're likely wanting, you're going to want to get this to your Fury Warrior. In fact, I will say this caveat, you probably have two Fury Warriors in your raid at this point. I'm sure one of your people in your raid has either re-rolled Warrior or maybe someone quit and you wanted to recruit a new Warrior right before uh, the last phase came out. And so maybe you have two warriors. And so maybe the second slot is actually another warrior right here. Maybe it is for you. Maybe. I'm not going to go into that. I, even though I did it the, with the Balanir, I'm not going to go into that. We'll worry about it later. I just want to say your warrior needs to be your number one priority. Now, second. Second's got to be your Retribution Paladin. And we go Ret here because Ret has gone full Super Saiyan in tier, tier 10. They're crazy, crazy strong in Tier 10. They are um, getting this four-piece set bonus from Tier 10 that is just phenomenal. And they finally start doing some big, big damage in Tier 10. Part of me really thinks that we want to give it to Rhett just because of how Unholy doesn't need Shadow Morn. Because you know we've got, we're going to put Unholy here. Let me say about Unholy real quick is a lot of the damage of Unholy is coming from your spells, your diseases, and your Gargoyle. Your Gargoyle is huge, especially considering of the scripting that we've been getting in these private servers recently. With all those things considered, your melee swings and your Shadow Strike or your Scourge Strikes aren't a big part of your damage profile. So we don't need a massive, massive weapon to do really good damage as Unholy. In fact, your best in slot tier is actually four piece tier nine. So you're not a very good scaling class in general. You've already kind of hit a bit of a ceiling at T9 once you get your four piece T9. Sure, we're gonna give you a good uh, we're gonna give you a good weapon during progression of tier 10, because you gotta have a good weapon. But Unholy can survive without getting Shadow Morn because they just don't have the damage profile. To utilize it well. Meanwhile, your red's going to get a ton out of this, a ton out of it. And of course, all three of these specs are going to be absolutely bananas with Shadowmorn and PvP. All three of them will be insane. And all three of them, of course, are going to want Shadowmorn. Of course. But you need to make a plan at the beginning of the server when you start and when you form your guild, when you tell them these are the loot decisions moving forward, this is the person who is getting the legendary at this point in the game really want to make these decisions as early as possible you don't want people going into icc week one or a couple weeks before icc release and just now finding out that they're last in line for shadow morn 
Make your decisions about these legendaries early. It will be well worth it. You will avoid all the drama in the world if you can just prepare your raiders and your guild to know who is priority for Shadowmourne and who is priority for Valinir. These decisions matter. Now, good luck. Best of luck. I pray away from all the drama in the world because you know it's coming. But these are my opinions on Shadowmourne and Valinir. Cheers, guys.